This is Jared from Commit to Quality, and in this video, we're going to go over authorization in Postman. So APIs use authorization to ensure that client requests can access data securely. You can essentially pass auth details along with any request you send in Postman. Auth data could be included in the header, body, or as parameters to the request. And if you do enter your auth details in the authorization tab, which is what we're going to go over in a little bit, in here at the moment there's nothing there uh, postman will automatically populate the relevant parts of your request for your chosen auth type because there's a bunch of different ones you can see here so like i say there are so many different auth types you can have north which is what we've been doing so far on all of the requests where north authorization was needed um, you can use api keys oauth basic or bearer tokens so many and in this example we're going to go through is using api key authorization i already have a API I want to look at, which is openweathermap.org. Here's the documentation, and I basically want to hit this endpoint. I put a link to this in the description as well, and you can follow along with me. So let's go to Postman. Let's actually create a new collection, and we'll name this, uh, just say weather API. You can name this whatever you want. We're going to use weather API. Let's add a new request, which is going to be a simple get, because in the documentation, we can see that we're trying to retrieve some data. Let's just paste this in here. We'll change lat to say 10 and lon to 10, because we need to pass in our own values. And for now, let's leave that app ID or API key empty. So let's just say lat to, lat, latitude and long to 10, 10. And hit send on this. And what you can see here is 401. So the status is 401 unauthorized. So it's basically telling us that we don't have an API key or it's invalid. And that's exactly what we're expecting. Because it's saying basically pass us an API key, which we haven't. Now, of course, you just saw you can pass it in the URL, URL request itself, but that wouldn't be secure. It wouldn't be best practice. So let's add it using the authorization tab. So in authorization, I'm going to select API key, because that's the type of auth we're looking for. And in here, you can enter the key and the value. To get your key and value, if you go into, into the documentation, you can already see the, the key here as app ID. So let's paste that in. And the value, I'm not going to show you my value because obviously that wouldn't be secure. What you can do is create a free account. So uh, I'm already signed in here. But when you create your free account, you can then click on your username, click my API keys, and it'll be inside this list. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my API key. I'm going to put it into this value, and I'm just going to close down the authorization tab. We'll move back to the parameters so you're not seeing what's going on. So let me pause the video here, and then it'll come back, and I'll have my uh, API key and value added correctly. Before we do that, we also want to make sure we're setting it to the query parameter. So obviously, like I said, you can change this to different values. In our case, we want to add as the query parameter like you saw in the example request here. So make sure you've done that. Make sure your key is app ID, add to query params, and you pass through whatever your value is. Awesome. So I've done that, saved it all off now, and I'm going to hit send. And you can see now we gain some details back. We've got a 200 successful response and whatever values coming back. And that's because inside authorization, I set the API key to what was in my account. Now, one thing I want to say is we've done this directly inside the new request. But what you can also do is if you have a bunch of these requests for weather API um, and you don't want to be adding it for each individual one, if you just go into the weather API, you can see here you have the authorization tab. And once again, you can set the API key in here. So if I put the key and value in here and set this to query parameters, I won't need it in this one anymore. So that's the next thing I want you to do. I want you to actually go into where that API, go into authorization, select your type as API key, enter the key again, which was, I believe, app ID, which you can just paste from this request authorization, set the value to where it is and make sure that add to query params is selected. So I'm going to do that and then we'll come back. So now I've done that. I've taken these values from this request and I put them into the collection authorization. And what we can see now 
is instead of type of API key, we can inherit auth from parent, which means every time we run one of these requests, now we'll create a new request. We won't have to add the auth in each time. We can say in inherit auth from parent, and that and this collection is going to contain the all of the authorization details. If I hit send, you can see that's all still work perfectly because now we store in the auth inside where the API collection. And that's it. That's a really quick guide on how you can set authorization in your request and how easy it is to do on this. Like say any questions or concerns, please drop a comment below. A like and subscribe is appreciated. Thank you for watching.